Hey hey and welcome to Industrial Zone. This is map 15 of Doom 2. This is the Game Boy Advance version of this level. And for this we're actually going to do something a little bit different. For you see, Doom 2 on the Game Boy Advance does something interesting with two of its levels. I think it's two. It does it with this and it does it with the chasm. Basically it takes the PC version of the level and it cuts it in two. And what you end up with is two new levels made from one large level. It's really interesting because no other version of Doom actually did this. And it only happens with these select levels. It doesn't happen with any of the other levels. So given that this is basically the PC version, and given that the beta of this level only has a few different textures, I figured it would be more exciting to take a look at the Game Boy Advance version of this level. Because ultimately, that I think is more fun to talk about. And as you can see, functionally, this level is by and large the same beast that you see on PC. There's a bunch of hit scanners wandering around on the ground level here. You, you're best served getting rid of these as quickly as possible. If you don't get rid of these guys, they will just sort of chase you around and chip away at your health. And because we haven't got any armor, that means it's going to be pretty nasty for us. So the this part here is the same, except for that metal thing at the side there, that metal structure. We'll talk about that in a second. So the Game Boy Advance version of Doom 2, the enemies only have a limited range of sight. So as you can see, that chain gunner didn't wake up until we were right in front of him there. And that is both a blessing and a curse, because when you walk out of range of enemies, they do actually kind of wake up and follow you. Um, but yes, this metal structure has actually been expanded. Now, that's a common occurrence in the Game Boy Advance version of Doom 2, because they use those, they use those to create new walls, which reduces the load on the um, CPU. Because obviously, some of these levels are huge, and the Game Boy Advance was not designed for big 3D environments like this. You can see over there as well, the other half of this level has gone completely missing. It's been replaced with like a castle structure. Now, that is the first sign for many people that this is not going to be the same level that you played on PC. Because there is no yellow key on this, on this level now. It's interesting because rather than just make a new level and kind of say we'll do that, they just kind of split it in two and it's interesting where they decide to have the level end points as well. Excellent. So I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. Oh no, fell down there. <laughs> that was silly of me. See what I mean about the shotgunners and the zombie men chasing you around? I'm not a big lover of this level just because, much for the same reason as downtown, there's kind of a lot of places you can go. And it's kind of easy to find yourself double backing on yourself. Um, it's not super well designed. And this part in particular here kind of is a bit annoying. Because as you can see here, the enemies blocking your way. They can knock you down. And then when you want to grab that red key there, you've got to hit the switch. Drop down here. You get teleported here. You don't walk off there. You have to go back into the teleporter. And then you get the red key. It's... A bit of a mess to be honest. I don't quite know why they didn't just have that teleporter there teleport you to the red key. It kind of just feels like there were extra steps put in for no reason, but that's just my opinion. So normally if you play this on the PC, you can completely skip the red key. It's it's very pot easy to just do that, but because we're playing on the Game Boy Advance here, and because there is no other keys past the red key. Well, we're just going to have to do this normally, aren't we? There is a secret exit normally on um, Industrial Zone, which you can use to get to the secret level, and it's super easy to get there, even even if you've just come into the level. It, it can take about a minute if you know where you're running. But, as you can see here, that's where normally the yellow door would be over there. Oh, I just fall off. Oh. You can see here as well, the teleporter drops you all the way over here. It doesn't actually put you where it would normally put you. So, they have thought about some of the some of the changes they've made. 
Personally, I'm not a big lover of this level, and I'm definitely not a lover of this version of the level because this drags it out a bit, in my opinion, but I appreciate what they were doing here. They wanted people to get that Doom 2 experience, and the way they decided to do it was to try and recreate the feeling and, and the levels by not... I would have personally just preferred they design a new level, but they, they wanted to be authentic, it seems. So... Here's the funny thing in here, there's a switch under the floor here, you can hit that, um, but what's more interesting is that the end of the level is actually here, so you can see there, it actually says exit up there, so the exit to the level is where the yellow key would normally be located. And that's the end of Industrial Zone A, so it's an interesting decision they made there, they've taken these massive levels and obviously the they must have felt these levels couldn't function as one um, and they've just decided to like split them in two and as you can see here they've they've constructed a whole new start to this second part which I appreciate I, I understand that this was kind of needed because there was no real natural starting off point in my opinion where you could have started the second part but you'll see here once we make it up this elevator, we actually end up pretty much in the second half of Industrial Zone. So, they repurposed this whole area here. So, it can be quite difficult to get on here on the Game Boy Advance, but this is the secret, this is the route to the secret exit. So, yes, the secret exit does actually make it into this version. It's just not in the first part of this level, so you've actually got to do the first part of the level to get here. So what I'm doing here, I'm just taking out the hit scanners. They're walking around the little ledge there. I actually do think the first part of Chasm, which we'll be getting to a bit later on in these walkthroughs, is actually really well done. I think it actually makes the first part of Chasms a much better level than its original counterpart. But as you can see here, there's a bunch of enemies here, we'll hit the switch, and that raises the platform that lets us get to the yellow key. So you can see there was effort made here, this isn't simply a case of them cutting a level in two just for the sake of it. They have actually made some level of effort here to kind of make the experience bearable for the player. And of course I'm not talking about how awful the textures are on the Game Boy Advance version of this level. Interestingly, like the Game Boy Advance version of the game tends to be very faithful to the PC version, so the textures you're seeing are actually pretty accurate for what was used in the original level. There isn't a PS1 version of this level and like I said earlier, my assumption with that is that this level is just too big. It's too big and there's too much going on. The PS1 would have not liked it at all. So there's a weird thing that kept happening when I was recording this level. When I went up to those yellow bars there, it would, it would basically tell me to go and find the switch to open it, and it, even though I had the yellow key, so I'm assuming that there's a, there's a glitch that can happen there. It's very weird. There's also a weird thing in the Game Boy Advance version where until you pick up an armor bonus or an armor piece, your armor basically effectively counts as zero, even if you bring something from the previous level. It's one of the big issues with the Game Boy Advance version of this game and it makes it hard for me to recommend people actually go out and play it. But this is very faithful to the PC version of this level. This room is pretty identical, even down to the Cacodemon coming out from the uh, chainsaw area there. It's interesting that the PS... The, the, the PS1 version of this takes out so many enemies, but here's the Game Boy Advance version just throwing the enemy, every enemy type it can in. It is very, it, it's a very interesting contrast between the two versions. I might do a proper comparison between the two at some point, because 
They're both very interesting takes on Doom 2 to fit very different pieces of hardware. Take that one. Chain gun is here. At least we took down the chain gunner. Ah, right, one shot behind me, that's fine. So the main problem with the Game Boy Advance version of the game isn't that, like, it's... It's it's not a particularly bad port, it's just that squeezing Doom 2 onto the Game Boy Advance was quite the challenge, and as you can see there, that's a blue door. We'll go and get the blue key now, because it's on the other side of the level. The big problem with the Game Boy Advance is that it just was not designed for this kind of game and technically impressive as it is to get this on it's not the most playable version I'd actually kind of rec I'd actually kind of equate it to the SNES version of Doom 1 in some aspects because the controls can become quite tedious and in some of the busier areas of this game the frame rate does love to drop but it is an achievement that this even appeared at all on the Game Boy Advance, so I guess like we should count our blessings. That there was the exit to the, sec uh, to the secret level, which obviously we're going to take. We're not, we're not going out through the blue door. The blue door is kind of a mean trap area. It's, it's got a bunch of imps in it, a, a Baron of Hell, and a Hell Knight. And on this version of the game, it runs like absolute nasty very easy to die in there because of all the lagging that goes on so I'd rather not focus on that it's the it's if you want to try it you can go and try it but like I'm pretty happy to escape through the secret exit once we've got the blue key another thing with the Game Boy Advance version of this level is that because it because the Game Boy Advance doesn't really have proper sector lighting in place like so it doesn't really have dark sectors this area is a lot lighter than it is in the PC version, so you end up being able to see a lot better in here than you should be able to, really. Grab that. Come around here. Grab that. So head up the stairs here. Kako demons have some weird behaviour in this version of the game. Like they, they really don't like rising up unless they ha absolutely have to. So once they fall into like a pit or something, they can kind of just stay down there, and they just basically become more tankier pinkies, which is interesting. So I'm gonna see if I can grab the plasma here. I can't. Lovely. So this is one of those quick secrets that you've got to run across the map to get. So one of my least liked design choices in Doom 2, you find the blue key in effectively behind a door there, there's an arrow pointing towards it. It's not fun, it's really not fun, but yeah. That was Industrial Zone B. We could have gone to the blue door, but honestly, I didn't fancy it because that room is just nasty and probably would have died in there. But it, as you can see, the level attempts to be very fearful, even if it does split it into two parts. What's your opinion on this? Do you like how they did this, or do you think it should have been a new level entirely? Do you even like Industrial Zone? Let me know in the comments.